All right, so let's take a look at the charts and see if you can spot some of these divergence patterns that have happened in the past. So I'm looking at Intel and um, I'm going to go to the three year chart, daily candles. And again, divergence appears on any time frame. Uh, but I'm using the daily candle time frame for this example. All right, so the three year chart. And let's go back in history. Uh, let's go back in time, maybe somewhere around here. Okay. And let's see moving forward, do we see any divergence patterns, right? Um, so I'm going to scroll to the right. Now you can see that this is a downtrend, right? So on a downtrend, we're looking for bullish divergence. On an uptrend, we're looking for bearish divergence. So you can see that this is on a downtrend and this is a swing low. And that's a swing low, right? So it's making lower lows. And notice I'm using three indicators here. I'm using the MACD, I'm using the RSI, and I'm using the full stochastics. Okay, and um, I'm looking for divergence on any one of them. And if I can get divergence on more than one of them, that's even more convincing. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, you can see the price is making lower lows, but MACD is making lower lows as well, right? It's making lower lows. This guy is making lower lows. This guy is making lower lows, right? So there's no divergence, right? So when I see divergence, I'll tell you, and then it'll be very obvious when you when you see that, right? So now it's made a new high. Um, so it's kind of like changing trend. Okay. So this time you can see that it's on the top of an uptrend, right? So there's a swing high, there's a swing high, making higher highs, right? So MACD, is it making lower highs? Well, it's a bit flat, slightly lower highs, yeah, but, but not that distinct, right? Uh, RSI is also kind of flat to down. That is a bit flat as well. So it's not really distinct, right? I, I must see it really obvious. And I'll show it to you when it comes, when you can see it's really obvious. Again, you can see there's price making higher highs. Your indicators are all making higher highs as well, right? Higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. Well, this is making slightly lower highs. Well, not really. It's a bit flat, actually. Yeah, it's quite flat. That's making higher highs. So it's not obvious. It has to be obvious. And when I see it, I'll tell it. I'll tell you, okay? All right, now this is obvious. Look at this guy. Okay, so right now we are at the top of the uptrend. Okay, this, this is an uptrend. That's the very top of the uptrend because it's making higher highs. And again, this is the swing high and it's confirmed the new swing high because the next candle made a lower high, right? So when this candle closes, that's a swing high. So I'm making higher highs. Question, are my indicators making lower highs? significantly yes i can see that so i'm going to use my drawing tool now i'm going to zoom in a bit so it's a bit more obvious i'm going to zoom in oops darn it zoom in too much um let me zoom out a bit where was i um yeah it was there correct okay we are back <laughs> all right so there we are now i'm going to use my drawing tool uh to connect the line so that's my swing high and that's my swing high. So I'm going to connect uh, this swing high. No, I'm not going to use this one, sorry. I'm going to use um, this one because it has to be vertically aligned. Yeah, I'm going to use this guy. This would be better. All right, this swing high. Okay, so connect this swing high to that swing high. Here we go. So you can see that the price is making higher highs. Now correspondingly, on my indicator, okay, so there's a vertical line over here. That's my swing high. Can you see the swing high? And, and I'm going to connect this swing high to this swing high over there. Now you can see that it's very obvious that there is a divergence. Because the price is definitely going up. The price is making higher highs 
but the indicator is making lower highs. That's on the MACD. Now, how about on the RSI? On the RSI, right, that's a swing high. And I'm connecting it to this swing high over there. And again, it is making lower highs as well. Okay. Now, on the stochastics, uh, it is making, well, it's about flat on the stochastics. Yeah, not, not significant, right? So I've got two out of three indicators showing me a divergence pattern. Can you see that? Price going up, higher highs, indicator going down lower highs. So that's a divergence and an indication that this is likely going to reverse down. Now, divergence can only anticipate that the price is going to go down. It can't tell you go down by how much. That's something that no one knows. But it's going to go down, right? So if you're doing a counter trend trade, you want to be selling there shorting the stock or whatever it is and it's going down you're making money right so again we'll go into the exact strategy in the next lesson but to give you an example uh this is what i would do right so that's a bearish candle again you want to wait for a bearish candle or see a bearish candlestick pattern so i've got a bearish candle over here and i'll probably put my sell order a sell stop order below the low of this candle all right which will be somewhere about what's the low the low is 44 dollars and 10 cents i could put my sell order at 44 dollars and five cents yeah roughly about that right so this line is kind of like my sell order right so where do i put a stop loss remember in trading you need a stop loss because there's no hundred percent it's going to go down it could go up and you're screwed right so i'll put my stop loss you know above the swing high so the swing high is about 45.18, right? You can see the H here. H is high, L is low, right? So the high is 45.18. I can put it three cents above there, 45.21. Thereabouts, okay, great. So this line over here represents my entry price. I'm gonna sell over there. A sell stop order which means only when the price goes below the low is going to trigger my sell order my stop loss is up there so in trading you must always know what is your risk per share what's your one hour distance right so in this case uh 4405 and 4521 that's a dollar 16. so in this case my one hour is one dollar sixteen cents that's my risk per share known as my one hour distance right now question is if it goes down i have to take profit somewhere okay so i want to for example target a two hour profit target so if one hour is a dollar sixteen what is two hour two hour would be roughly uh two dollars and thirty two cents so my profit target would be my entry price, 4405 minus 232. That's 4173. All right, so let me use another line and I'm going to draw 4173. Thereabouts. Okay, so this over here, that's going to be my profit target at about 41.74. So the price goes down to here, I'm gonna take profit, take my money and run, right? Now, again, notice that we are trading against the trend, right? We are selling on the uptrend. So on an uptrend, remember that the moving averages, in this case, the moving average acts as a support. Can you see that? Acts as a support. So you always wanna ideally take profit before it hits the support. And you can see that very nicely, my profit target at 41.74 is just at or just above that 50 moving average that could act as a support level can you see that all right so with that let's see if this trade would have worked out okay um so next day what happened boom goes down so you can see the next day the price goes down hits my sell order i'm in the trade all right and it goes down goes down doom, 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 doom. oh okay there we go so sure enough it went down and hit my profit target i'm out of the trade on to the next trade. There you go, 
Okay, so that's how it works, right? Anticipate when it's going to reverse, higher highs, lower highs, sell, uh, put a sell order, take profit once it hits the next level of support. Now, of course, that's not all about the strategy. So in the next lesson, when you learn the actual strategy, which is the Bollinger Mean Reversion, we're going to be putting in Bollinger Bands as well to increase the probability of winning trades. At the same time, we look at certain price action where we want to see the price um, making a forced double top where it picks out stop losses placed by previous traders because that's how uh, market makers manipulate the markets and they take out stop losses before reversing back down. So we want to see that happening as well. So all that uh, in the next lesson when we go into greater detail. All right, but for now, it's just understanding the, the concept of divergence. And later, we'll add in a lot more stuff to increase the win rates significantly. All right, so with that, let me just uh, remove that. All right, so moving on to the right, let's see if there's uh, any more clear divergence. Okay, now over here, I have spotted another one. Um, you can see we are now at a new high. So again, at the top of the uptrend at a new high, we are spotting bearish divergence. So we're connecting the swing highs again. So again, uh, that's a new swing high over there. And again, when this bearish candle closes, that confirms this swing high. So that's a swing high. That's a swing high. Right, so looking at the indicators, we have got a swing high over there. Uh, we've got a swing high over here. We've got a swing high over here. So there are multiple swing highs, right? Over here, over here, and over here, over here, okay? So do we see another bearish divergence? I do, right? So where do I see it? Uh, so let me just show it to you where it is. So once again, I connect swing highs on the price there, okay? Now, again, it doesn't intersect any price, so that's a valid thing. Now, on the MACD, you can see that connecting the corresponding swing highs, it's very obvious it's a significant divergence again. So, price making higher highs, once again, MACD making much lower highs, right? And again, if, you're, if I connect over there to here, you can see as well, RSI has divergence, all right? Uh, stochastics is there's no divergence it's pretty flat so two out of three indicators showing divergence is pretty powerful so once again we can anticipate that price is coming down but we can't predict exactly where it's going to go to so it's all about probabilities right so once again if i'm taking a counter trend trade i'll be placing my sell stop order below the low of this candle so the low of the candle if you look over here under l the low is uh, 46.28 so I place my sell order about three cents below that is 46.25, all right? So 46.25, roughly about there. So that's my sell order. And my stop loss, I can place it just above the swing high by about three cents above the swing high. There'll be 48.39 plus three cents, 48.42. There. All right, there we go. So again, this will be my entry, my sell stop order, where, where I'm gonna sell short. So the next day, if the price goes below the low of this candle, I'm gonna be in the trade with a sell order. Stop loss will be up here, all right? So again, what's my one hour distance? Again, remember in trading, you gotta know what is your risk per share. So 48, 42, um, 48, 42 minus 46, 25. That's 217. Two dollars and seventy cents. So again, that's my one hour distance or my risk per share. So again, in trading, we always want to risk one hour to make two hour or more. Right, so what's 2R? So 2R would be 217 times 2, 434. Okay, so my profit target would be 4620, 
5 minus 434. Forty one ninety one, okay. So my profit target would be forty one ninety one. That would be roughly about there, okay. So there you go. So that's my profit target, and that's my entry price. So the next day, if it goes down, let's see if it can reach my profit target. And again, remember we are shorting on the uptrend. It's a counter trend trade. So there is a fifty moving average support over there. We gotta be careful and hopefully you can hit the profit target right at the support over there. Now, if you're a bit more conservative, you could actually raise the profit target just at the support level. But let's see how it goes, okay? So the next day, what happens? Next day, uh, price goes down, triggers my sell order. Let's see if we can hit the profit target before hitting the stop loss. Boom, boom, there we go. Another winning trade over there, all right? And we're out of this trade. So that's how we, again, look for uh, bearish divergence to anticipate reversals to take counter trend short entries. And again, like I said, in the next lesson, you'll be learning a lot more about how to use Bollinger Bands, how to read price action to increase the probability in the next lesson's strategy section. All right, so we've seen a lot of uh, examples of bearish divergence. Now let's take a look at bullish divergence. And I'm looking at this chart on Cisco. It's a one-year chart. And again, let's scroll to the right and see if we can identify any bullish divergence. Remember, we identify bullish divergence at the bottom of a downtrend, anticipating a reversal from the trend. Okay, so let's scroll to the right and let's see if we spot anything. All right, so we may have something over here. So you can see that right here, we are at the bottom of the downtrend. This is a new swing low, all right? So this is a swing low, and this was a swing low, and that was a swing low over here, swing low over here. So the price is definitely making lower lows, okay? Let's connect the swing lows with the line. So for example, over here, we can see that this swing low, um, is connected to this swing low. So price making lower lows now how about the indicator right so on macd you can connect the corresponding swing low to that swing low yes it's making higher lows so there is a divergence okay now how about on the rsi rsi we can't connect this one we can't connect this to this because it will intersect that so we can't use that we could connect this one though we could connect this one to this one so yes, it's making higher lows and we then have to connect this one to this one over there. Right, so that's fine as well. So you can see that there is divergence on two indicators. So it is a valid trade. We could take this trade. And again, um, this is a bullish pin bar. But remember, we have to look at the next candle uh, to close higher than this candle or rather this candle has to make a higher low than this candle to confirm that this is a swing low. So indeed, this is a swing low. All right, so this is a valid trade. We could take a buy counter trend trade right here. So where would I place my buy order? Okay, so I'll place my buy order right above the high of this candle. Let me just zoom in a bit so that it's a bit clearer. There, good, let me zoom in, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put a buy order right above there. So my buy order is going to be about 45.28. Uh, three cents above the high, so 45.28, uh, somewhere about there roughly. I can't get it exact. Hold on, let me just change to a horizontal line, 45.28. There we go, okay. Stop loss would be below the low of this candle. The low is 44.09 minus 5 cents, 44.05, 44.06, sorry, 44.06. Again, I can't get it exact, but somewhere about there. Okay, so that's my entry price, that's my buy, that's my stop loss. 
what's my one hour distance what's my risk that i'm taking so 45 28 minus 4406 i'm my risk per share is 122 so i'm going to risk one to make two okay so two r times two be 244 So 244 plus my entry price, 45.29 is 47.72. All right, so my profit target would be 47.72, which would be somewhere about roughly over here. There we go. Okay, so that is my profit target. So the next day, if it goes up, it will trigger the buy order and hopefully hit the profit target. Okay, now this is a valid trade. But in reality, I may not take this trade. What I don't like about this trade is this big gap over here. Do you see this gap over there? I don't like that gap. Because when you see a gap, the start of the gap and the end of the gap acts as strong resistance and support. So in other words, this over here, let me just show it to you over here. This uh, high this could act as a resistance because of the gap right but never mind for the purpose of demonstration let's just take the trade and see what happens because you never know all right so ready let's take the trade next day what happens okay so the next day we've got a bearish candle in fact it's an engulfing bearish candle not a very good sign okay and uh but it exceeds the high of this candle which means that it does trigger our buy order yes it does all right uh well let's see what happens oh it goes down yeah sure enough goes down goes up oh here's the here's the stop loss all right so this was a losing trade so always remember that in trading you can't win all the time no strategy is 100 percent, but you don't need it to be 100 percent. remember that in any trading strategy if you get just a 50 percent win rate you're gonna make a lot of money at a 60 percent win rate you're gonna make a fortune why because when you're wrong you lose one hour when you win, you win 2R. Remember that concept, right? So if you, think, if you think about it, remember, if you take, for example, 100 trades over a couple of weeks or months, right? And 50 of them are winners, 50 of them are losers. Okay, and again, usually my trading, of course, I get a much higher win rate, but I'm just saying, even if it's 50-50, right? But each time you lose, you lose 1R, okay? And each time you win, you win 2R. So if you do the math, what does it mean? Okay, so let's take a look. Take a look. So over here, you will lose 50R. 50, 50 times 1R is 50R. Over here, you make 100R. Correct? So 100R minus 50R gives you 50R in profits. So it's like a business. In a business, you've got sales and minus cost, you get profit. In trading, winning trades are like revenue. Losing trades are like cost of goods sold. So you've got to have losing trades. You've got to have winning trades. But at the end of the, mi the wins minus the losses, you've got to make a net profit. That's the idea. So what's, what's 50R? Well, usually you can risk 1% of your capital or 3% of your capital. So if you're risking 1% of your capital, then you have to size your position so that 1R is 1%. So 50R is 50% return. So getting a 50% return on your portfolio in a couple of weeks or months, it's not bad, even with a 50% win rate. So remember, in trading, it's not about whether you're right or wrong. It's how much you win when you're right and how much you lose when you're wrong. As long as you win more when you're right and lose less when you're wrong and you win more than you lose, you're making money. And that's the secret of professional trading. Right? It's not about being right all the time. So anyway, this was a losing trade. I'm going on and on, but no worries. Let's move on. Okay, so with this losing trade, let's move on. And let me just remove the drawings and see if another trade appears. Okay, so we're going to scroll to the right and see, do we have another trade that appears? Okay. Now, 
So initially, this was a swing low, right? And we got in the trade and we got stopped out. Now this is a new swing low. So now with this new swing low, can we now enter long again? Do we still have a divergence uh, that exists that we can use? All right, let me just zoom this. I can see it clearer. Right? Um, yes, we still have a divergence on this one. Let's take a look. So again, this is the price. making lower lows and my MACD making higher lows. So my MACD is still making higher lows. Okay, so the divergence still exists. I, I may have another chance to go, go long again to take this trade. Okay, and if I connect this one to this one, lower lows and connect this to this, higher lows. There we go, right? So I've got two divergence again, MACD going making higher lows, RSI making higher lows, this could be a second chance to get in. All right, great. So this is the new swing low. All right, and the next candle makes a higher low, so that confirms that this is a swing low. All right, but again, I want to wait for a bullish candle before I get in. Now, this is the first bullish candle that appears over here. Now, again, let me zoom in so you can see it clearly. Here we go, All right? So I'm going to enter above the high of this bullish candle. So what's the high? The high is 43.83, okay? So plus three cents, 43.86. I'm gonna buy it 43.86. 43.86, somewhere there, okay? And my stop loss would be three cents below the swing low below the low of this candle, there'll be 43.05 minus 3 cents, 43.02. Somewhere there. Okay, so roughly, right? Okay, so I'm gonna place my buy stop order over here and my new stop loss, <coughs> excuse me, over there. So this time, what is my 1R? What is my risk per share which I'm taking, right? So roughly my 1R is 43.86 minus 43.02, roughly is about 84 cents. So this time my stop loss is tighter at 84 cents. Okay, so I'm risking one, uh, so I'm risking 84 cents, I must make a profit of 2R. Always make double your risk as far as possible, right? So. I have to make 168 in profit to make it worth my while. So 168 plus my entry of 43.86, my new profit target is somewhere about there. Okay, there we go. So that's my new profit target over there at 45.54. And this profit target would be just below that recent swing high and below the 50 moving average. So there's a high chance I could reach there. Let's see what happens. So if I place the order and the next day the price goes above the high of this candle, I'm in the trade. So next day, boom, goes up, triggers the buy order, I'm in the trade. Let's see if it, ooh, big can over there, boom, hits my profit target really nicely. Yeah, just zoomed in, right? So here's the profit target, so this was a winning trade. So you can see the first trade was a losing trade, I lost one hour, the second trade was a winning trade, I made two hours. So I'm still profitable, right? Even if I'm right half the time in this case. So there you go, that's bullish divergence for you. And again, I'll see you in the next lesson, Bollinger Mean Reversion, We'll be learning how to put in a lot more stuff to make this a really, really great trading strategy for you. So if you want to be the first to get my next video on YouTube, do click the subscribe button right now. If you want to check out my online courses, go on to piranaprofits.com where you can enroll in our professional Forex, stock trading, options trading, and value momentum investing courses where you're going to learn how to trade like a professional and generate an income anywhere in the world. 
If you would like to come to Singapore to attend my live classes, Wealth Academy, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com. It's Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.